Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Allah Akbar, Allah Akbar. Allah Akbar, Allah Akbar. Ashhadu an la ilaha illa Allah. Ashhadu an la ilaha illa Allah. Ashhadu an Muhammad Rasulullah Ashhadu anna Muhammad Rasulullah Hayya ala Hayy ala al-falah Hayy ala al-falah Allahu Akbar, Allah La ilaha illa Allah Inna alhamdulillah Nahmaduhu wa nasta'inuhu wa nasta'hdihi wa nasta'afiruhu ونعوذ بالله تعالى من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا إنه من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلن تجد له وليا مرشدا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبد الله ورسوله اللهم صل وسلم وبارك عليه وعلى آله وصحبه ورد اللهم عن ساداتنا أبي بكر وعمر وعثمان وعلي وعن الصحابة أجمعين وعنا معهم يا رب العالمين أما بعد my dear brothers and sisters again the the note for the beginning of the khutbah of almost every week about the cell phones may Allah سبحانه وتعالى bless you you made the effort to come to the masjid using the cell phones or just texting or checking your social media platforms while the imam is talking is, um, is according to the, the ulama, the scholars, um, uh, invalidate your prayer, subhanAllah, because texting now is just like talking. So we're not allowed to talk unless it's, uh, there is an emergency or necessity, of course. But um, when you text nowadays, while the imam is talking, of course, you're not allowed to talk. Uh, when you text, it's just like you are um, you know, you're talking as well. So you, you don't want to risk your time and your efforts. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you. So tomorrow, inshallah, is a, um, the first day of the new uh, Islamic 
Hijri calendar. And I know that, which is, which is very unfortunate sometimes, that we care more about the regular calendar. We know in January, in the beginning of the year, but when it comes to our main calendar, which is basically the Islamic, sometimes we tend to forget. That's why we, uh, we make sure to remind ourselves and to remind the community and the brothers and sisters everywhere that tomorrow, inshallah, is the first day of the month of Al-Muharram. The month of Al-Muharram, the year of 1444. 1444 after the hijrah of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam so sana mubaraka inshallah i ask allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make it a blessed year and ask allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make this coming year better than this year and to make it uh, mubaraka and to give us all the khayrat and to uh, make our dreams come through inshallah rabbil alameen and to give us success and tawfiq in, in our lives in our homes in our schools in our businesses and everything else that uh, we, we we take care we do in lives allahumma ameen ya rabbil alameen so brothers and sisters when we talk about the new hijri year what, what comes to our mind is a historical incident that happened at the time of the Prophet Sallallahu they kind of shifted, you know, the direction and the, qibla, the direction of the whole entire Ummah, the whole entire Muslim community. The Hijrah from Mecca to Medina, right? The Hijrah from Mecca to Medina, we know the story. And today, the, the intent of the Niyyah, the, uh, the, you know, I'm not going to go through that story itself because we've heard it so many times. And, uh, you know, we're not here to, for just for entertainment. But, but rather, what are the lessons that you and I, to, in this day and age, today, right, the, the, 20, uh, the 29th of July of the year 2022 in the state of Texas, in the city of Dallas, right, what can we benefit? What can we learn from that, right? But we just need to take, to, you know, I take you back a little bit to uh, the time of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam to to let to tell you that Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam tried to to come with a, to, to call people for La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah. He was trying his best to make them better citizens, better human beings, better better people, right? But unfortunately, the idea of change is not easy for everybody. People are against the unknown. You know, they tend to basically uh, push back and resist. Because you know what, we have a system and someone is coming and he's trying or they're trying to change the system. We do not want this. We're happy in our own comfort zone. And that's what Rasulullah came to, to change. Okay? Came to change, to bring the message of prophethood and Islam back to them. Right? So some people, a majority of them resisted. This is really, really badly from the, from the get-go, from the very beginning. You know what? Stay in your lane. We don't want your guidance. We don't want to worship other than our idols. And, you know, we want to live uh, upon that and we want to die upon that. But what the message of Rasulullah was again to change all of that. So Rasulullah tried in secret first da'wah. And then few people accepted Islam. Sayyidah Khadija, Ali ibn Abi Talib, and Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu anh, and so on and so forth. And then more people started accepting Islam. They would meet in secret, right, in private, because they were trying to avoid the clash with the, uh, basically, the Mushriki Quraysh, the leaders of Quraysh. Because in the beginning, if they stop the mission or the da'wah, or the idea from the get-go, from the beginning, what is going to happen? It is going to be difficult to start the idea again, right? So moving forward, when they heard about the da'wah, when they, they tried to stop it with all means, you know, they tried to harm the Prophet wasallam physically, psychologically, emotionally, financially, they tried it all. All right? And the Prophet wasallam and his companions, they took enough pain. But when it got to a point where their life was really, really at risk, and they needed to try different place, when they got the order from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then the Prophet ﷺ didn't give it a second thought. Especially that the tarbiyah and, you know, the, 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 the education and the mental and physical and financial preparation that he, 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 he left his companions with or he's done to his companions was telling him that, that it, they are ready. They are ready to sacrifice everything. They are ready to take it to the next step, to the next level. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam the permission to migrate from Mecca to Medina. From Mecca to Medina. Right? So Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam planned it very well, prepared, you know, for the new beginning, for the new start. Now, 
what are the lessons we can learn from the journey of Al-Hijrah of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? How can we benefit from this journey? Number one, from a spiritual aspect, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam could have simply give up on his da'wah and his mission from, from day one. He came up with an idea that Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala sent him with, all right? He brought, presented the idea to people. Some people accepted, some people rejected, all right? He was from a noble family. He was, he, if he wanted to be one of them, he would have been one of them. If he wanted to have all the money in the world, they would give him. If, they, if he wanted to have anything that he could ask for, they would have given it to him. They even said that to him, right? When they sent Abu Talib, his uncle, when they said, you know what, why don't you just negotiate with him? Just tell him, whatever you want, you, have a, you are a young man, you start in your life, you know what, we can help you, we can give you everything that will make you successful. Just stop calling people for, to worship one God. That was the deal. So when he went, when Abu Talib went to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and he, to bring the offer on the table, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said the famous phrase and statement, he said, Ya Ammi wallahi law wada'u al-shamsa al-yameeni wal-qamr al-yasari ala an atruka hadha al-amr ma taraktu. My uncle, by Allah, if they are to put the, the moon to my right side and the sun to my left hand side, so that I can leave and can stop and give up on my mission, I will not do that. I will not do that. All right? I am not giving up on my idea. I am bringing about change. I won't change people. Right? So, and the companions of Rasulullah sacrificed. The companions of Rasulullah they suffered from all kind of uh, abuse, all kind of, uh, you know, uh, torture, physical, emotional, financial, you name it. Everything. They've been through everything. And when Rasulullah told them that it is time to try another place to bring our idea and our mission into a different city or a different town, they did not think twice. Because him as a leader, he had so much impact on them. They believed Rasulullah in everything. They were inspired by him, right? So they were ready. They were ready to give up their properties, their houses, their wealth, they're everything. And that's the first lesson. They did not think about anything. Now, when you go from a different city, from one city to another, that's not an easy thing. Even you coming from New York City just to move to Dallas, the new, you know, the new Hijra place, right? Now Dallas, mashallah, becomes a new Medina, mashallah, or a new Mecca, right? So everyone's coming here, alhamdulillah. That's not easy. It takes a lot of thinking. A lot of preparation, a lot of, you know, discussion. You and your wife with your children, with your parents, and you have a lot of things that you, you have in your mind. So imagine, imagine leaving everything behind your back. You live in your house completely. You live in your family. You live in everybody. You live in your business, your trade, everything. You live in everything, and you're going to, to start from the very beginning, right? What was the, the goal? What was the reason for that? Because the deen, the faith. We believe in something. We have values and principles. And because of those, we are going to try somewhere else. Faith first. Your deen should come before anything else in dunya. If you are, have the choice to, basically, you're asked to compromise uh, whether your deen or something uh, uh, materialistic, you should think first that your deen, you should not compromise in your deen in any way, shape, or form. And we see this happening, and we live in the United States, and a lot of times you're put into, you know, a situation where you need to choose between your deen, all right, your religion, your faith, or your career, right, or your business. Now it becomes a difficult test, but then the hijrah of Rasulullah tells us, listen, you choose the deen first. That's why he said it, it would have been so much easier for Rasulullah to stay in Mecca enjoy everything, all the privilege that they were, they were willing to give it to him and his companions, but it did not, no, it did not work for the Prophet Sallallahu He has a mission, right? So now as a Muslim brothers and sisters, you should never co compromise in your deen. You should never compromise in your deen and don't worry what people, you know, say about you. I was talking to one of the youngest sisters the other day, and you know, he wanted to be consistent with the salah, maintain the five daily prayers, but a lot of times when he hang out with you know, the wrong friends, I would say, and he says, you know what, I, I just gotta go pray. They start making fun of him. Oh, you're, you're religious, you're one of those, you're, right? You guys know what I'm talking about. 
But subhanAllah, I told him, listen, doesn't matter what they say to you. It does not matter. You have to be confident. Don't, do not be a follower. You should be a leader. You should be a leader. Don't try to fit in. You're born to stand out. Right? And that's to all our youngsters, all our youngsters here. You should be a leader, not a follower. They should not be dragging you towards their way of life. Way of life. You should, you're the one who should bring them to what is good. What is khayr. Right? So that's what Rasulullah taught his companions. They left everything and sacrificed everything for their, for their faith and for their religion. But nowadays, brothers and sisters, you have your boss is telling you that, you know what, uh, one condition for this job, you're not allowed to ask for, you know, Salat al Jumu'ah or anything like that. Some people don't even think about it. They're just like, you know what, khalas, it's a, it's, a, it's a job and I don't know what to do. We live in America and all of this kind of excuse. Yeah, that's exactly what happens. But no, you should, you should stick to your values and your principles. And you should know that this is illegal. No one can stop you from coming to the masjid. No one can stop you from coming to the masjid. It is illegal to, you know, you have that, that that's what, is it that second amendment or the first amendment? Freedom of religion, right? That's your right and you should fight for. But the most important thing that you yourself have the niyyah, right? And the intention to come, that's the most important thing, right? So your business. Sheikh, my business, wallahi, but I have to do this. I have to sell alcohol. I have to do all of this. Sheikh, you don't have to. You do not have to. You don't have to sell alcohol. You don't have to sell pork. You don't have to do that. Don't compromise in your deen because you're just looking for, for, for you know, a couple hundred, a couple thousand dollars. But I need this to live, yeah, Sheikh. Look for something which is halal. Look for something which is halal. This should be your priority. Don't compromise in your deen. You do not have the same test as Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Alhamdulillah. You, nobody is forcing you to leave your house, your property, your wealth, your children behind. But Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam faced that difficulty and the challenge, him and the companions. So that's the first. The first lesson we can learn from the Hijrah of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, brothers and sisters. Your faith should come first. Do not shy away from your deen. Do not shy away from telling people about your deen. If someone asks you. Why are you not, you're not doing this? I told them because this is my faith. That's my conviction, my belief. And I'm sticking to that. I'm not going, I'm willing to change that. Because at the end of the day, brothers and sisters, on the day of judgment, you will have to answer by yourself in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Your friend whom you thought loved you so much in dunya, they will not be able to help you on the day of judgment. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would ask you, why did you do this? Why didn't you do that? Right? So this is extremely important point, your faith first. I have shared this story before, but subhanAllah, it's just for the benefit. Uh, one, of the, one of the cities in Mexico, I visited before me and my, my wife, and they were taking us on a bus, just like a tour, alhamdulillah, a vacation. So they were taking us on a bus, and they were taking us to one of the tribes, that probably you know what I'm talking about. But before we, 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 we arrived, the tour leader told us, you know what, uh, we're gonna tell you about their traditions, and uh, so that you can, when you go there, you try to practice with them, all right? And then they were also promoting their, uh, like, alcohol or something. So what we did is, that, you know, they put some a little bit in a small, uh, uh, you know, cup, or, and then they give it to the people, all right? And now I find myself in this situation. I can tell them I don't drink. They will respect that. But at least you have to pass it to the chair behind you, right? So... While they're giving the alcohol from in, in the front of the bus and I was towards the middle, I was just like, how am I going to tell them this, right? But this lesson that I personally learned from the hijrah of Rasulullah that your faith comes first, do not compromise in your faith, doesn't matter. People are going to be hurt, it doesn't matter as long as your faith comes first, right? So they're passing the, uh, you know, the, the cup or the glass, uh, the, the, the glass to, to my chair, and then I refuse to touch it. Because we're not allowed to touch alcohol even. No, just give it to people. We're not allowed to touch it. It's najis. It's filth. According to our belief. So the guy in front of me gives it to me. Right? And then I say, I'm sorry, I don't drink. He said, oh, okay. Uh, do you want, just want to pass it? I was like, I'm sorry, I don't touch it. He, he looks at me. I was like, he thought, probably thought I'm an alien or something. Right? And he says, sir, are you, are you a Muslim? I was like, yeah, I'm a Muslim. I was like, oh, okay, I understand. I respect that. And then he stood up, you know, and he passed the, the glass himself. 
So this is, these are, we, we face similar situations in our lives over here, living here. When you think about this lesson from the Hijrah of Rasulullah ﷺ, brothers and sisters, you'll always remember your faith first. Don't change your name because you want to please people. You want the respect of people. Right? That's the biggest mistake. If your name is Muhammad, say my name is Muhammad. Don't say I'm Mo. Right? Do not change your name, young people. You don't have to do that. Don't let them force you to, 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 to change your name or to, to be someone who you, not really you are. Right? You're, you're changing your personality because you're trying to please your friends or you don't want to be bullied. You don't want to be the odd one. You don't want to be... It, it, it should not be the case. It should not be the case. We see the, high, the accomplished Muslims, subhanAllah, like, you know, soccer players. Uh, when they literally, the, the coach, I remember the coach of uh, my fellow Egyptian, Musa, Allah, you might have heard his name before. And subhanAllah, I remember his coach when he was saying that we had to stop the training or postpone the training for five or ten more minutes because we respect his faith and we wanted him to pray first. Right? In another game, I saw that, that it was a Ramadan, it was time for Maghrib. They paused the whole game just to give water, some water, to some of the players. Right? When we respect our faith, people respect us. Don't ever think that when you compromise in your deen, people will respect you and you'll be funny to them and fun to hang around with. That's not the case, brothers and sisters. Rasulullah could have done all of this, but he chose not to do it. And that's the first lesson. Ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us hidayah, ya Rabbil Alameen. Aqulu qawli hadha wa astaghfirullah li wa lakum. Alhamdulillahi wa kafa wa salatan wa salaman ala ibadihi al-lazina astafa. Ashadu an la ilahi lallahu wahdahu la sharika lah. Wa ashadu anna muhammadan abiduhu wa rasooluhu. Amma ba'd. If you want to accomplish something in your life, you need to learn how to sacrifice. In order to achieve something greater or amazing you need to give up something it is what it is nobody can take it all you will not be given everything you want to be successful get out of your comfort zone get out of your comfort zone do something which you're not usually you're not comfortable doing right you want to be the best student you need to study hard there is no coincidence here there's no coincidence when you look at the top students in your class talking to our youngsters and I see many of them here mashallah if you look at the top achievers in your class, they were there because they, they got out, out of the comfort zone. And instead of sleeping the whole entire night and a little bit more, they deprived themselves from sleep for a, few, for a few hours because they had a goal, right? You're not going to get there. And it's not impossible to be the best, but you need to give up something. The companions of Rasulullah because they wanted to achieve something great, which is spread the message of Islam, they sacrificed their wealth and properties. And as I mentioned in the first lesson, they sacrificed a lot of things. And so did Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He knew that the move to Mecca, to, from Medina to Mecca was good for them, was better for them. But yeah, there are a lot of hardships going to be in the way. But they said, you know what? We have to step out of our comfort zone. We have to leave our own city, our beloved city, Mecca. And we need to go somewhere else and try something else. And that, that's a lesson that we should learn. When Suhaib al-Rumi, radiallahu an, we hear his name all the time. Suhaib al-Rumi, he was extremely successful in business, right? And when he, he was in Medina, in the beginning he was very poor. He, had, he barely had anything. But then subhanAllah, when, when he lived in Medina, in Mecca for, uh, for, for a few years, he became very successful. Right? Then, when he heard that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam migrated from Mecca to Medina, he wanted to leave as well. Then the leaders of Quraysh, the disbelievers, they stopped him, the borders of Mecca. And they said, Ya Suhaib, where are you going? Did you forget? When you came here, you had absolutely nothing. We made you. And now you just leave you like that? He said, okay, so if I give you everything, would you let me go with Muhammad and his companions? They said, yes. He said, here you go. Everything is for you, but let me go. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed one ayah in Quran, وَمِنَ النَّاسِ مَنْ يَشْرِي نَفْسَهُ بِتِغَاءَ مَرْضَاتِ اللَّهِ About the Suhaib al-Rumi. And for amongst the people, those who are ready to sell themselves for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This ayah, brothers and sisters, was revealed in regards of Suhaib al-Rumi for the sacrifice. 
He was a successful businessman anyways. Wherever he go, he will start again. He needed to sacrifice something for now to accomplish something greater. And that takes me to the next point. It's a statement, but it's, I find it to be very, very true. When life gives you a lemon, make lemonade. Right? What does it mean? When life gives you a lemon, make lemonade. The lemon here is basically the betterment, the struggle, the difficulty, the challenge, the test. Will life throw all kind of difficulties in your face? And instead of whining about it, and instead of crying about it, instead of complaining day and night about it, instead of saying, that's, that's over, I am not going to get anywhere. I'm a loser, I'm a failure, I am, I am. That's what you say to yourself, to bring all kind of negativity. Rasulullah could have done that from the very beginning. He could have said, you know what? I tried, I tried hard day and night, but it's not working. People are not accepting the deen. People are not accepting Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He would have just given up from the get-go. But guess what? He did not give up from the get-go. He accepted the challenges and the struggle of lives. And then, but he tried to make lemonade out of it. He tried to make something sweeter out of it. Something t that tastes better out of it. So he went to Medina. He said, it's not working for me here. And instead of whining about me failing to convince people with the message of Islam, let me try somewhere else. And guess what? He went to Medina. And guess what? Many people accepted Islam. And guess what? He went to Mecca after that. And Mecca was all, you know, for him and the companions. Right? So he didn't whine. He didn't give up. So brothers and sisters, in these difficult times, and, you know, challenges are, are surrounding us, subhanAllah, everywhere. You need to remind yourself of the hijrah of Rasulullah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And when life throws all kinds of difficulties, I know everyone is broken down from inside. Everyone's broken down. Everyone is suffering from something different, right? Either whether you lost someone or you lost your job or, you know, you have some health issues or someone of your family members struggling with their health or it's in your school or you couldn't get into, you know, admitted to the school that you like, right? Or anything, you didn't get the job that you were hoping for or you're looking for. A lot of things. If you're facing some issues with your spouse, with your children, so life is going to throw all kinds of tests upon you. But what is your, how, how do you approach, what is your attitude here? Either you whine about it, and you say, you know what, that's the lemon. It's bitter, it's sour, I am not taking it. I cannot handle that. Or, just make lemonade out of it, and change your perspective, and try again. Try something different. And that's what we learn from Rasulullah I said in the beginning of the khutbah that although I'm talking about an incident which took place 1400 years ago, but we still can benefit to this very, very day today. We can benefit from it, right? And the very last one, just to conclude, inshallah, the importance of having good companionship. Importance, that's a topic. We know Abu Bakr Siddiq, radiallahu anhu. Whenever we talk about the hijrah, the name of the Abu Bakr Siddiq is brought up. Abu Bakr Siddiq, radiallahu anhu, was an extremely successful businessman, very influential person. He gave up everything to be with Rasulullah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And that's my advice to uh, sacrifice everything to be with Rasulullah and that's the kind of friend that you want to be, you want to be, you want to hang around with, around with, right? You want a friend to be for you when it's tough time, when it's difficult time, not the one who is with you when it's just convenient, when everything is going well. But the minute things go south, they get rid of you or they leave you, right? And subhanAllah, for some reason, we tend to stick to this kind of friends. That everything is going well, I'm with you, the fun is there, and all of these things, that, that's have fun. But when something happens to you, they're not around. They're not even there for you. So we need to choose our friends carefully. Because they're going to be with us, not only in dunya and the hereafter. They're going to bring us to the, the, the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They're constantly going to remind us to be a better human being and to better, better students and better youth and better men and better women. 
We learn this from the Hijrah of Rasulullah So brothers and sisters, number of lessons that I shared with you that we learn from the Hijrah of Rasulullah which is starting tomorrow, the, the calendar again, the first day of the Muharram of the year 1444 will be tomorrow. Tomorrow, inshallah. Number one, your faith first. Do not compromise in your faith, seeking the respect of people. Please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When you please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will put the respect, your respect in the hearts of people. This is how it works. In order to achieve something great, sacrifice had to be made, right? You need to get out of, we need to get out of our comfort zone. That's what we learn from the hijrah. And after that, when life gives you a lemon, when life's through all kinds of difficulties, make something sweet out of it, right? And then the true friendship, ya khwani, is extremely important. That's a separate topic that we can, inshallah, discuss later. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make the year of 1444 uh, 44 better than the, the previous year, ya Rabbil Alameen, and to give us a lot of blessings and to guide our youth, our children, our spouses, our families. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to increase our rizq. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give shifa to those who are struggling, to give maghfirah to those who lost their souls. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to place comfort and peace in our hearts ya rabbal alamin aqulu qawli hadha wa astaghfiru allah li wa lakum qumu ila salatikum yarhamuna wa iyyakum allah Allah Akbar, Allah Akbar, Allah Akbar, Allah Akbar. Shadu Allah ilaha illallah, Shadu Allah ilaha illallah. Shadu anna Muhammad Rasulullah, Shadu anna Muhammad Rasulullah. Hayya ala salah, hayya ala salah, hayya ala al-falah, hayya ala al-falah. Kad kamati salah, kad kamati salah, Allah Akbar, Allah Akbar. La ilaha illallah. Allahu Akbar Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim Maliki Yawm Al-Din Iyaka Na'budu wa Iyaka Nasta'in اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين آمين لا يكلف الله نفسا إلا وسعها لها ما كسبت وعليها ما اكتسبت ربنا لا تؤاخذنا إن نسينا أو أخطأنا ربنا ولا تحمل علينا إصرا كما حملته على الذين من قبلنا ربنا ولا تحملنا ما لا طاقة لنا به واعف عنا واغفر لنا وارحمنا أنت مولانا فانصرنا على القوم الكافرين الله أكبر سمع الله لمن حميده الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر 
الله أكبر الله أكبر الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين آمين يريد الله ليبين لكم ويهديكم سنن الذين من قبلكم ويتوب عليكم والله عليم حكيم والله يريد أن يتوب عليكم ويريد الذين يتبعون الشهوات أن تميلوا ميلا عظيما يريد الله أن يخفف عنكم وخلق الإنسان ضعيفا الله أكبر سمع الله لمن حميده الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر السلام عليكم ورحمة الله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله